Okay, folks, welcome to the second lesson of our Sway Move course. In this lesson, we'll learn how to set up the Sway Move environment, and that's a fundamental step before you start building something. This is the agenda for this lesson. Firstly, we'll learn the development process of Sway Move. Then, we'll learn how to install the Sway clients. And thirdly, we'll learn how to use the Sway client by examples. At last, we'll give you an exercise to sol solidify your knowledge. Okay, let's start with the development process of Sui Move. So, as you may know, Sui has three available networks. The DevNet or TestNet are the test networks, and you can use one of them to experiment with a version of Sui running on that network, while MainNet is a network for production. So often the case is that Sway Move development process is be like um, we firstly create a Sway Move project, develop and test it on the DevNet, then we we'll work to release a stable version and test it on the testnet, and lastly, if that works fine, we'll publish it to the mainnet. Okay, as DevNet and testnet are the most used networks by developers in their daily work. I think you should be familiar with both of them. So the testnet and devnet network consist of four validator nodes operated by the Mistin Labs, and also a public network Sui Explorer for browsing transaction history, and nodes for the nodes. Clients can send transaction and read requests via this endpoint right here. And the Sui network version can either be the DevNet or the TestNet. Okay, so oftentimes you use the Sui client tool to create a project and do something. And it is a binary program called Sui, which is a Rust based program. It provides several useful sub commands such as creating a move project, creating a Sui account building a move project, publishing a move module, and calling on chain move functions, etc, etc. And the suggested development process is like, uh, firstly, you create project, write and test move modules, then you publish it and call move modules on the devnet. Then you verify and fix issues if anything happens. And after that, you're going to publish and call move modules on the testnet. And pretty much the same, you're going to verify and fix issues here. And finally, if everything goes fine, then you can publish the move modules on the mainnet. And yeah, that's it. Okay, folks, let's say the Sui command line to usage. You can help to create a new move project you deploy move modules and call move functions. So it's very handy and you'll use it a lot. So let's begin to create a move project. It's a Hello World project. And you can basically copy the commands here to create a new project here. And since we have already created a new empty project, and we will just open it. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, move that Tomo file. Um, this Tomo file has several sections, and we'll explain them one by one. So first of all is the package section. It contains the name and also the version of the module. And secondly is the dependency section. So the dependency section is optional. The only dependency here is the swim framework. A dependency record should include git repository, the path to the directory which containing the move.toml and also the commit, uh, git commit hash. And finally is uh, address uh, section, which is also optional. So we often define the name address here and give the value zero times zero. And while de deploying the module, it will be replaced to the active address. So before we move on, we need to change it to the devnet because we are using DevNet today to 
uh, build, test, and also deploy our modules. All right. So right here under the sources folder, we have a hello world that move code. And this is a pretty simple hello world example here. So basically we have the imports, which uh, imports uh, the library and then the hello world object, which is an object which has the ID and also the key. And finally, this is a pretty simple mean function which just creates a hello world object. And this one has a string hello world. And then transfer the object to the uh, sender, which is also the contract deployer. OK, so as we have the code here, we're going to try to build it. So let's type sway move build to compile the uh, this module. So firstly, you will update the Git dependencies, then you will download the dependencies, and finally, we'll finish the compiling. So that means it successfully compiles the module. All right, we'll also try the sway move test if you have any test codes. So pretty similarly, we'll update the Git dependency, download the dependency, build it, and finally, it should test the test codes. Because currently this uh, project is newly created, so we don't have any tests yet. So that's why we have zero test. Okay. Now we're gonna try to publish to the DevNet. But before that, we're gonna connect to the Sweet client. So let's type uh, Sweet clients. So it shows the command that the configure file doesn't exist here. Do you want to connect to a Swift full node server? We type yes. And default to the Swift DevNet, select zero for the key scheme. Okay, so after successful execution, you will just create a, a client, client YAML file, also the Swift key store file. So let's try to find it. So C C C of big. Uh, all right, didn't have. Uh, okay, so as you can see here, so we have the client uh, YAML file, which is uh, the file that records the configs. And also the suite uh, key store, which records the uh, private key of the current account. Nice. Now we'll try to use the uh, environment commands to see our uh, address and also our objects. So let's type suite clients. And yeah, so it just shows up the network endpoints and tells which is active. Then we'll type sweet client active address. And this shows up the active address of ours. Then we'll type sweet client object. So this one will show the objects under an account address, which is this address. So let's wait a bit. Uh, because this environment is nearly set up, so the account has no object so far. That's why it doesn't print out anything except for this warning. Okay, so we have already connected to the Sweet client. Now it's time to publish our module on chain. But before we do that, we need to request some test coins because, you know, in blockchain, everything is. So there's there's several ways you can request uh, the gas tokens from the faucet, such as you can request the test tokens through Discord, or you can request test code tokens through wallets, and you can do something like this. So we're gonna use this method here. So we're gonna copy it and we will replace the uh, C address to the 
active address right here. And yeah, that just shows up. We have already successfully request some test tokens right there. If now we type sway clients objects, then you should be able to show up the, the test tokens we have. Okay, so this is the test token ID, which matches this ID right here, and it shows up the coin. So if we want to say the detail client object of this So yeah, if we want to see the detail information of an object, we can just call the uh, sweet client object with the object ID, which is the, the ID here. And it just shows up the detail information. So this is the uh, amount and the uh, object ID right here. And it also shows up the type of the object ID, the sweet coin. So perfect. Okay, let's now try to publish the module we just created on chain. So firstly, I'll, uh, I'll get the address, the absolute address of my module. So it should be desktop, low, row. All right, so that's my module address. We will use Sway clients, uh, publish, and copy this right here and use a gas budget uh, the gas budget is just the amount of tokens we just got All right so it will firstly update the dependencies and compiles again and then yeah so this result is pretty long but it is simply, in a simple words, it just means we have successfully published our uh, modules on chain. Let's explain them one by one. So as you can see here, the first section is a transaction digest, in which we can get the transaction hash. And the second section is a transaction data, so it dumps the raw transaction data. The transaction data shows the detailed transaction information, such as the sender, which is, I believe, our uh, address, uh, address transaction data. Yeah, which is our address right there. And then it says uh, uh, some other information like the gas owner, gas price, and also the gas budget. We'll just input it. Then it's the transaction effects. So the transaction effects section shows the status of this transaction and the operation on the object ID. This transaction creates two objects. One of them is a mutable object start with the zero times E9E e, blah, 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 and which is the package ID. And the second object is a gas object. And finally, as uh, object changes, so the object changes section gives more detailed information about the objects. The transaction published the object, as you can see here, it says published uh, with uh, package ID zero times one BA, blah, blah, blah. So this is the package ID of the object and it's consistent to the transaction effects section. And finally is uh, balance changes. So it, it just says like, um, we use this much tokens to publish our module on chain. Okay, so we have published our module on chain. Let's try to call the functions. We're gonna use three client uh, or package and with the package ID, I think should be this one. And the module 
with the module name of hello world and function because we just have the mint function so that's the only callable function we have guys budget let's use a gas budget of this amount but with two less zeros because we just use some of the gas tokens here okay all right so so yeah we have successfully caught the the mint function of our published module so other than the object changes other thing is pretty much the same, but let's say here, it says uh, detail information of the object. So uh, it says we have create a object, which is a hello world, hello world object under the module hello world. And then under the, uh, our published package right there. All right. Nice. So we have build, test the module, and we also publish on chain. And finally, we call the function mint to mint a hello world object. Now it's time to view our object on the explorer. All right. I'm going to copy the object ID here. Okay, so this one is a Sway Explorer. And be careful, we're gonna use the DevNet because that's the one we have published the module. So let's copy and paste our object here. All right, as you can see here, so it's the same thing, hello world object in the module hello world and under our published module. And for the text, it's a hello world, which I think matches to our code. Nice. Okay, so let's do a summary. In this class, we learned the suggested Swing Move dependence development process, how to install Swing Client on macOS, Linux, and Windows. Also, the Swing command line tools subcommands and Sway Explorer usage, such as those commands. And let's do a exercise. So you will need to try to modify the hello world contract. You'll copy the mean function and name it to my mint. So this function creates a hello world object, which holds I like Sway move instead of hello world string. And then you will deploy the modify contract on the Sway devnet call the my main function and understand the transaction details. Okay, so I'll post here for like probably 10 seconds. Then you can just uh, post here and try to do the modification, also the de deployment. And I'll give you the reference answer just a little bit later. You can start now. All right, so here is the exercise reference answer. So as you can see here, we have the public entry function, my mint. So the my main function just uh, create the same hello world object except for the string being replaced to I like sway move. And then you just transfer the object to the deployer. And then you will also call the sway client publish. Uh, to publish on chain, then call the my main function just as we did before. Okay, so that's the end of this class, and I hope you enjoy it too. I'll see you next time.